Alright, this is like attempt five at trying to record this stupid video, but it always gets to be such a big size that that the software or my computer, I don't know what, just can't handle it and it just crashes, crashes the screen capture program that's putting this all together. But it doesn't let me um, record audio while I'm recording video for some reason, so this is all coming secondhand after the recording of this, but uh, so I'll do my best to keep up with what I was trying to point out when I was shot that. Um, so uh, right there I just demonstrated that the wave resets. There was uh, an attractor mode here that the player dies right there, as you can see. For some, this only happens when I'm recording. I have yet to be able to recreate this outside of while I'm shooting the video, but I get an alarm bug sometimes, um, which I don't know where it can be recorded because, or where it can be being called because of, uh, there's only two places that I'm using alarm, or, yeah, there's only two places that I'm using alarms, but um, here I'm just going to edit the values real quick so we can see the other... Uh, game entities in there. Uh, let's get that 70. So, jump in. We got the scorpion coming down. We got these, uh, the fleas dropping and setting the stuff up. He uh, set a poison mushroom, so we got a head coming down. And, uh, yeah, so, um, I'm going to try and zip through this as much because I can so that, uh, the software doesn't crash on me again. Um, so, I'm sorry if anything seems, uh, rushed or, uh, if there was anything I should have spent more time on because the, the program is just not cooperating. Um... Of course, there's a close all button for these, but uh, once I close all these out, um, I'll actually get down into uh, jumping through all of the different uh, objects that we got. So I'll start here with the blaster, since it's the first grouping of, uh, of, of code here. So, blaster is just a game object that contains uh, a a bunch of different methods for movement and shooting, so like input controls. And then um, it has a, a callback method here that gets called in the bullet through a listener pattern to let the blaster know that it's able to shoot again once the bullet's been destroyed. <coughs> Excuse me. When it collides with any of the critters or enemies, it uh, gets this animate death function gets called, which was supposed to just be switching to an explosive uh, animation, playing it out, and then resetting the scene, but for some reason I couldn't get it to switch, so I actually created a whole separate um, explosion object, uh, which all that does is it plays the explosion animation where the player uh, was, and then as soon as the animation's out, it deletes. So I did a strategy pattern for the, the different input methods. So there's a base class of input manager that the, the blaster keeps a pointer to. And then there are derived classes of keyboard input and alternate input, which uh, it's, the alternate is just the, the AI for the blaster mode. So right here we see that based on um, what kind of flag is being called in this set input manager function, uh, then it'll create either the, the AI blaster uh, controls or the, uh, the the player controls. The AI blaster controls are just a bunch of ifs to tell it to keep shooting and move in a diamond pattern, but there's also a space press event where um, it actually cleans up the scene so you can jump into the gameplay. Um, the keyboard events is just moving and shooting. Or the keyboard to input is just moving and shooting. The, it uses different if checks to tell the blaster um, 
uh, that its methods are being called. But here it's the, the first of the centipedes. So the centipede segment is the base class for my centipede objects. It contains the struct that um, get the, the, their movement queue gets passed into, and the pointers and uh, the set pointer functions for uh, for linking between uh, other segments. And come on. I don't know why I was just sitting. Oh, it has a clear queue function too. So that um, anytime the, uh, the head or the body get destroyed, they, uh, they actually clear the queue out so that nothing is lingering once they're recycled. I think it does it on init too, just in case, because I was checking for other things uh, when I did that. But, um, anyways, I don't know why I'm just sitting here for so long. Okay, finally, now we're moving on. I, okay, I guess we'll show the body first. Um, <laughs> the the body is. I mean, it's a lot simpler than the head. All it does is it just moves based on the cube movement it's been passed, and if the, the next segment behind it isn't null, then it passes that um, the, the cube movement. It's a, It just used before popping. Uh, when it collides with the bullet, I'll get into that when I do it with, for the head, because it's like the same thing. Um, so... The, the update for the centipede is just moving based on its queue, and then um, if that the, the queue is empty, then it goes through all this logic here. It checks if it's poison. If it's not poison, it checks if it's moving left or right, and then it checks if it's going um, if it's nearing the edge of the screen and if it needs to turn. And then if it passes all that, then it actually just moves left or right based on which direction it's going. And the what, here is where it checks, is there a mushroom in front of me? And then it checks if the mushroom's poisoned. If it's not poisoned, then it just goes through, um, it just queues up moving in that direction. Um, otherwise, it flips the poison flag. And if there is, in fact, a mushroom in front of it, then it uh, instead calls the, the turning functions and that tells it whether or not to turn uh, up or down based on whether or not it's hit the bottom of the player's movement, or whether it's not it hits the bottom of the screen. Well, if it hits the bottom of the screen, then this uh, vertical flag gets flipped, so then it starts turning up instead of down. Uh, the left and right functions are th the same thing. It's just with values being swapped so that um, it's being moved in the right direction. Um, This is just more turning stuff. So what the, if it hits a poison mushroom, then um, it basically overrides any other queuing stuff going on, and it base and it just keeps calling, uh, turning right, turn right and turn left every time, to um, uh, to until it gets to the player's movement space, and then it evens back out. So when it collides with a bullet here. First, it uh, it tells the manager that it needs to reconnect any segments behind it, um, and then spawns a new mushroom where it just died. If the there is a mushroom, in, if there is isn't a mushroom already there, it dereferences the segment from the centipede manager here, and it also um, updates the player score. But uh, here, when it dereferences, um, there's some bad juju going on here with this uh, this 99 business, but what I'm basically doing is, um, is I'm just giving it this big offset, so because there are two arrays of centipede segments that I'm keeping. One is just for heads, and then the other is just for body se segments, or not body segments, the other is, so the body segment array is the actual chain of centipedes, and the solo heads are all of the extra ones that are being created. And since they're being kept in separate arrays, and I'm using a callback method to dereference them, I had to 
give a, a, a very large difference between um, between what they're actually uh, passing when they when they do this callback, just to make sure that solo heads don't interfere with the body segment array and body segments don't interfere with the solo, interfere with the solo heads array. But this reconnect function, what it does is it checks if there is a next segment behind the uh, the one that's being destroyed, and if there is, then it checks or then it creates a head there and then checks if the one behind it, um, if if there's one behind it also, so that the head links up to any lingering segments that are behind the one that's being dis uh, destroyed. So this create chain is doing exactly what it sounds like. It's um, it's spawning any of the segments that need to be spawned, and then it's also linking them together so that they have the pointers to each other to be able to pass their queue information along. <coughs> um, it's also putting any uh, anywhere that they aren't being used to null, so that when we go here and clean up, uh, that we're not calling mark for destroy on dead objects. So the flea, super simple, just uses a queue to drop straight down, and then also does a check of if there's a mushroom there. If there's not, then it does a check of should I be spawning one. Um, the, when it collides with a bullet, it lowers its health by one, and also uh, flips that flag off so that it knows to stop spawning mushrooms, and then um, also, uh, if it gets hit again, then it deletes itself. The scorpion is even simpler, it just moves straight across the screen. The actual collision event is handled inside the mushroom. Um, but yeah, it just uses a cue to move straight across the screen. and Every time it does that, every time it needs to update its queue, it checks am I outside the bounds of of the screen, and if, if it is, then it deletes itself. The spider is a little slightly more complex, just because it has to do some actual decision making in how it's moving through um, some random uh, random number generators to tell it which movement function it's going to be using, and also. Um, if it's reached the bounds of its uh, its movement space, so it it knows not to go down past the bottom of the screen or up past where the the player's movement space, uh, and then once it's outside the edges of the screen, then it deletes. But um, the collision with the bullet it actually passes along both its Y position and the blaster's Y position to the um, score manager. Um, the factories there, as you all saw, they were, they're all singletons, they're all, uh, recycling factories for every game object that there is, but here, uh, is where I'm getting into some of my managers, the sound base, the loud manager, and the sound manager. The, the sound base is the base class for my strategy pattern for implementing the sounds. As you can see, they're all just empty methods, so that, um, this is what, it, the sound manager is calling in the uh, tractor mode, so none of the sound bits are playing when the 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 critters, the blaster, whatever, is pinging the sound manager to play any of their sounds. Then the sound base is just not doing anything. The loud manager actually has all of the methods implemented implemented for playing uh, the sounds. So. Um, Based on what mode they're in, is what. Excuse, excuse me. Is based on what mode they're in, is what um, type of sound or what type of sound. I don't want to say manager because that's not how I'm doing it, but it's the nomenclature gets confusing. But you you get the drift. Um, so player manager is just what handles the spawning and respawning and destruction of the, the blaster. Once 
the the bla once the player's lives are run out, then it does some prep for a scene change back to the the attractor mode. It checks the score list to know that okay, did, did, did am I having to update any of the high scores, and then it writes to the the text file. Um, And then there's an alarm that gets called when the player dies, so that there's three seconds between when they die and when a new wave actually gets uh, started. So the player manager pings the wave manager then, but um, so the wave manager, all of these are singletons by the way. <laughs> um, the wave manager, what it does is, or the, yeah, well, most of them are singletons, the loud manager and the sound sound base aren't, but the wave manager is a singleton that reads in any wave values that we need from the text file that I, uh, you saw me edit earlier, um, and it manages the, the actual cycle of, uh, of waves, so like the game flow, so once, uh, once all of the centipede segments are destroyed, the centipede manager pings the wave manager, okay, all the centipede segments are dead go to the next wave, which, um, it stores all of the wave values in array, in an array of wave data that gets read in, so, uh, I'll look at that class in a second, but, um, yeah, so using the, the, the values that the wave has for the centipede length, centipede speed, uh, it creates the centipede chain, it checks if the solo heads are greater than zero, then ping the centipede manager to spawn that many heads. Um, if the, the scorpion trigger is set to the value that we want for it to spawn, then spawn the scorpion. Um, and then the spider is spawned on an instance. The other value for the um, for checking the, the flea trigger value, I'll get to that when I discuss the, the mushroom field. But uh, we have a clear enemies function for when the player dies or when uh, a wave gets cleared, just so if there are any, any lingering uh, enemies on the screen, they get wiped up, as well as uh, any uh, damaged mushrooms get fixed and the score gets edited, uh, adjusted as needed. Um, anywhere you see is clearing, by the way, is something that was giving me a problem when uh, I was trying to implement different scenes changing because since the wave manager has alarms it's a game object and it was it was causing all kinds of issues when I had to uh, switch scenes but the wave data here is a class that is just straight up reading in or what that uh, that text file is being read into so there's a number of string tags that uh, designate what the values are, and then also, um, uh, it saves them in an array in the wave manager. So, the HUD is basically just the flyway pattern that you gave us, plus my, uh, start screen, which is, um, my start screen class, which displays all the high scores and what other else text needs to be on the screen during that. It, um, it also puts grid objects, uh, which are invisible colliders over, uh, over any of the text, so that, uh, the centipede collides, or the centipede interacts with it, and the bullets collide with it, all that good stuff. What the HUD does is, um, it just updates the score in the corner, updates the player's lives as needed, and it also, um, displays the the high score the highest score in the top center of the screen um, and then I have a strategy pattern for that so there's a there was the dead HUD which I was showing earlier um, which during attractor mode that's the HUD that's being used by the score manager to display stuff so the score doesn't get updated it doesn't display lives that's basically the only difference between the two um, now we get down into the mushroom field, so there's the grid objects I was talking about earlier. The mushrooms themselves are a der derivation of grid objects, so that I have the grid object array, so I can, when I make the grid objects, when I make the, the invisible colliders that go 
over the go under the um, the, the text on the screen during the tractor mode, the centipede will interact with that. Although for some reason it doesn't like interacting with that last row, it'll just walk right over it. But whatever. Excuse me. Then the mushroom field just has methods for creating the grid objects over the top of any mushrooms and destroying the mushrooms. So we don't have text that has mushrooms on it. Um, it also goes through a double for loop up higher than this to uh, do some random math to make the for loop that, or to, to make the, the mushroom feed, spawn all the mushrooms. This check poison function just is for the centipede to check if there's a, a poison mushroom in front of it. The deregistering is, uh, it also, it just nulls out its place in, the mushroom's place in the cell array once it's destroyed through a listener pattern. Um, the mushroom count gets subtracted, the and it checks against the flea trigger value, but through the wave manager to know, okay, does this, oh, flea need to be spawned because of the, the the number of mushrooms on the field is too low. The erase field doesn't actually erase the field. What it does is, uh, um, because what it do, what it does is it just nulls out all of the values of the the mushroom field array, so that when switching scenes, the, the, the mushroom and grid object, the game objects, um, those are already going to be deleted, so the, the mushroom field itself needs to know. Or it's, it's more of a safety thing than anything else. They're already going to be dereferenced, um, but, you know, you never be too careful. But, um, yeah, so that's what I got. I, so I have a constants file, too, that I just popped open. But, um, the the few main things that I didn't all the way get in is sometimes, like right here, the segments end up, like the body parts um, get just backwards. <laughs> or uh, if they get shot while turning, or if uh, a head gets deleted while while it's passing, turning stuff, then the segment ends up at a wonky rotation when it gets recycled. I never ended up cleaning that up. I don't know why, how I didn't get to that. It was just lost in the pile of other things I had to do, I guess. Um, probably mostly with all of the stuff that blew up after trying to switch between the game modes. That was a lot of fun, tracking down all of those singleton game objects and figuring out why things were being called when they weren't supposed to be, or why uh, certain things weren't being cleaned up. Um, but yeah, I'm a lot more proud of this than I was of what I ended up with last quarter. So, that's it.